Have you ever thought about building your own VPN server, but it sounds like a daunting task? Forget it. It's simple. We're going to do it today using WireGuard Easy. I'll walk you step by step through setting up your own VPN, connecting a client, and even accessing it through UI with uh, Cloudflare tunnels. You can give access to your friends, family, let them all have connections to your VPN service. So whether you're traveling abroad or whether you're connecting from a public Wi-Fi hotspot, you'll be nice and secure using your very own VPN. So let's go ahead and walk through it now and see just how easy this is going to be. For our VPN server, we're going to be using a cloud node. Now this is great because you're not using your home infrastructure. It's always on and you can set it up so that anybody in your family or friends can all access it. So here we are on our Linode. If you don't know how to set one of these up, there's a video right here that'll walk you step by step through how to do it. So what we're gonna need from this is our IP address right here. And then we're gonna go over to our Portainer instance. Now on this Linode, I've already set up Docker, Docker Compose and Portainer. So we're gonna go to our Portainer instance on the same server. We're gonna click on local and go to stacks. We don't have anything set up right now, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the uh, Docker Compose file that we're gonna to use to build this. This Docker Compose file is gonna be linked in the description below. Also, you'll be able to get to it from my website at whatsnewandrew.com. So let's go over to get the Docker Compose file. I'm gonna copy the whole thing and then just paste it right in here when I say add stack. Okay. So all we have to do now is name this stack and then hit start and we'll be ready to go. So if you want to get to the next part of this where we set up the VPN, you can go ahead and skip to the next chapter. Right now I'm going to walk through how this uh, Docker Compose file is set up. So if you're new to Docker Compose files or you're just interested, you can see what uh, the Docker Compose file is all about. Otherwise, jump ahead to the next chapter and we'll pick up there. So in the Docker Compose file, we're going to start with services. We're calling it WireGuard Easy for this service. Uh, the image that we're going to use is right here. So this is just a simple, uh, it'll go out and grab this image to, to build the Docker container. We're going to call it WireGuard Easy or WG-Easy so that you can see it when you're looking at all your portainer um, instances. When you, when you have a number of different containers running, you'll be able to see what it's called. Uh, the volume that we're using is uh, ETC underscore WireGuard and that will map internal to the container to the slash etc slash WireGuard. So if you're not familiar with uh, Compose files or Docker, uh, the left side of the colon is your actual machine, so the actual virtual machine. The right side of the component is internal to the container. So that's how we can map something in the container to something external. And so that's how we can have the like the Docker Compose files uh, tell us where we're gonna say configuration files are saved. We're gonna map ports this way. So it's just an easy way for us to say external on the left side, internal on the right side. As we go further down in the Docker Compose file, you'll see a similar structure here with the ports. The first one, 51820, that's the UDP port and that's what we'll be using to connect into this when you connect a client to this server. The next one, 51821, that's our TCP port, and that's the web UI that we'll use here in just a bit. So those are the only two ports you need to have opened. Um, you, this second one is optional, uh, but you'll need it to be able to set things up at least the first time. We're telling it to restart unless we stop it, so it'll continue to restart if, uh, if it needs to. And then here's a couple of, uh, of sections here where we have some extra commands that we'll add. The net underscore admin, that's set up to allow this container to interact with the network stack. You need that since we're actually setting up a VPN client or VPN server that's going to be interacting with uh, this, this uh, virtual machine. The uh, sys module here, it um, also gives the ability to load and unload modules without having to be a, a, uh, a root access user. So you don't have to have full root access to this and it gives you some functionality. So a little bit more secure um, for this, this container versus having it wide open and having full root access, which is not always the best idea. Uh, the next one, the, uh, the IP forward and the, uh, the source valid mark equals one. The first one makes this act as basically a router. Your, your data packets are gonna be coming into this container and then being routed back out. 
And so it's doing that because we want to be able to route the uh, all your network traffic through this. If we didn't have this set, your data would come in, but it wouldn't go anywhere. The second one does a little bit more security and make sure that you uh, the kernel can check to make sure that these are va valid data packets. So the two of those are, are bet definitely needed to be able to, uh, to make this work. Below that, we have the first of our re required sections in our environment variables. The first one is going to be the host IP. Now this is the IP of the machine that's running this uh, service. So this web application is going to be sitting out on a machine somewhere, whether it's your home instance or whether it's a cloud instance like we're doing with this Linode instance. Um, so you'll need to know what that host IP address is. And I'll show you how we'll, we'll set that up here in a moment. Uh, language for me, it's going to be English. Your default DNS, um, I'm just putting in 1.1.1.1. If you don't put anything in here, then it won't have DNS and you'll have some issues. Um, you could also route this maybe to a uh, an instance of um, AdGuard or PyHole or something like that so that once you're in there and you're VPN inning, inning to this, VPN inning, VPN, VPN inning, anyway, once you're connecting to this, you can uh, actually have it go through a PyHole or AdGuard and something like that and, and do ad blocking uh, whenever you're connected to it as well. So that's optional. Uh, the next one is a, is a strong password. You're going to want to put one, a strong password in here to protect the uh, the web UI. So we'll put one of those in, similar to the host IP. I'll show you how we'll do that. Uh, below that, we have a few other changes here. If you want to change those ports from 51821 and 51820 to something else, you'll change them here, but you'll also need to change them in the, in the file above as well. So I'm leaving the default. That's just fine here. Um, the next thing is, your client IP address. So when you connect in from a from a, a client to this server, it's going to assign you an IP address. The default is 10.8.0. whatever. So it'll assign the next available IP address. If that doesn't work for you or you want to change it to something else, you can change it right here in this one. Just uncomment this line and make the change there. Uh, below that, we're not going to change the MTU. But then I like to do the persistent keep alive. This makes sure it keeps your connection uh, alive so that it won't drop it after a certain amount of time. I set it to 25, so 25 seconds it does a, 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 a basically keeps the, the connection open. Then below that, this is another good uh, good feature that you have. You have the op option to, uh, to have just certain IPs address, uh, certain IP addresses connect to this. So say you only come from your home address or your family comes from their home address. You can put in a, a comma delimited, delineated list here of IP addresses if you choose. You could also set that up at the firewall. The only issue with this is if you're connecting from, say, a cell phone, if you were going to set this up on a cell phone or you're connecting remotely from, say, a coffee shop or a, a Panera or something, you don't necessarily know what the IP address is. So then you wouldn't be able to connect to this. So just something to keep in mind if you, you restrict that. Um, we're going to skip through what the uh, the mes messages are here. The last one is um, just kind of a fun thing to do. You'll see in the UI is if you want to have the traffic stats show up and what kind of graphs you want to show up. So I just set it to two. It'll have uh, kind of some waveforms in there. We'll see that here in just a moment. Uh, below that, we again we define the uh, the volume that we've set up, and that's pretty much it. All we need to do now is those two uh, variables that we have up here, host IP and strong password, we're going to set those. So in Portainer, all you have to do is go down here to add environment variable. We're going to add two since we have two of them. The first one is going to be our host IP. So we'll copy that and put it down here. The second one's going to be a strong password. So you want to come up with a good strong password. And in my instance, I'm using the very strong password of password. Don't do this. Uh, the other one that we have, the host IP address. So the host IP address is here at the top, but if you don't remember what it is or know where it is, over here on the left, there's a public IP address for your Linode server. Click on that. If you're doing this from your home address, you can just go to whatsmyip.com and look it up there. But we need this IP address right here. We're going to copy that. And when we go back over here to Portainer, we're going to drop it in here to the right. So it's going to say, uh, what it'll do is it'll take WireGuard host equals, and it'll replace this with the IP address that we have down here. Same thing with the password below that. 
So we're going to call this WG dash easy for WireGuard easy. And that's all we need to do. We'll scroll to the bottom here and we're going to hit deploy the stack. So now we've successfully deployed our stack. Now, it may take a moment for everything to start up, but let's go ahead and take a look and see how it's progressing. If we click on this, we'll see now that it says healthy. It may take the first time, three or four minutes sometimes, to load everything up while it builds out the keys and everything. But go ahead and let it finish. Uh, it'll say starting, and then once it gets to healthy, you're ready to go. So let's open up a new tab, and we're going to put in our IP address and the port. So if you remember, 51821 was the port we needed to use. So let's go into that one here. And here it's asking for our password. If you remember, we had the really, really tough password of password. We'll put that in, hit sign in, and now it says there's no clients. So all we have to do is start adding in clients. We're gonna say new client, and we're gonna call this one, what's new Andrew? We're gonna hit create. And just that easy, we've now created our first client. So how do we connect to it? Well, we'll walk through that now. There's a couple of different ways. You can download this, and you can download the configuration, put it on your local machine, uh, and that works great if you're coming from a laptop or, uh, or a desktop machine. The other option is to use the QR code. So that's what we're gonna do now, because we're gonna connect with our phone, and we're gonna connect in and use this client, use the server from our client, which is gonna be our phone. So let's see how we do that now. Okay, to connect the client, all we have to do is go up here and click on the fancy little QR code. And then in our app, we'll click the plus button, scan from QR code. It'll automatically scan it, register it. We'll name it our uh, tunnel. We're just gonna call this VPN. You can call it whatever you want. Hit create tunnel, and there you go. We now have our, our tunnel set up. So let's connect to it. If you look here where it says what's new Andrew, there's nothing showing it here in the, uh, in the status. But if we toggle the button on the right side, you'll see we immediately connect in. It shows the connection statistics for it, shows we just connected to it, what our IP address is, and that we're ready to go. One of the fun things we can do is uh, you can watch what's going on. We can turn on those graphs that we talked about before. So you can watch as data is going in and out. These little graphs go by, just kind of a little fun thing to show. So it's all set up, we're running, we're connected through to this VPN, so now we have a secure tunnel from our phone in this instance out to our cloud server and out to the internet using 1.1.1.1 as our DNS servers. Again, you can change those DNS servers to your own Pi hole to AdGuard. We'll show you how you can do that later in some other videos, how you can set up both of those. But right now, you're ready to go. You can share this with your friends and family. If you want to create an extra client, all you do is hit new, and you can type in whatever the name is you want to use for it. We're just going to say new client. So new client. And there you go. Now they can have their own QR code. You, you could uh, have them scan. You could send them the config files that they need if they're going to be using it on their laptop. Again, just download the WireGuard app, and they're ready to go. So now you can share this with your friends, your family, you can have them have uh, secure connections, say they're traveling abroad or they're just connecting from a public Wi-Fi. You wanna make sure that you've got uh, secure access. This is a great way to do it. You could also host this internally to your own house and then you could VPN into your uh, own house and connect to your services. But again, that's gonna be opening a port in your firewall and you may not wanna do that. So go ahead and check out some of the other videos I have on how to use Cloudflare Zero Trust on how to access your applications remotely while using all kinds of authentication. Those will really help you there as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look real quick at how to get rid of using just an IP address and actually use a direct URL. For this, we're gonna use Cloudflare Tunnels. I've got other videos on how to walk through setting up Cloudflare Tunnels. So this is gonna be a brief overview, but you can look at those other videos and see exactly how to do that, as well as how to set up authentication, which is very, very useful. So for us, we're gonna go over to Cloudflare Zero Trust. In here, we're gonna say Access, and actually go to, uh, to Tunnels. Within there, we're gonna click on our demo tunnel, which is connected to this server that we're using right now. We'll hit Edit, and Add Public Host Name. 
The public host name we're going to add is just going to be vpn.whatsnewandrew.dev. So we'll put that in here. And then we'll put the IP address that we've been using earlier uh, directly into this. So we'll say HTTP and hit save host name. So now when we go to this address right here, it'll actually take us to this service at this IP address, which is our Linode server. And it's going to actually take us there over a uh, domain URL versus using the IP address. The great thing about this is we can go ahead and then shut the firewall access down and actually close that port off because right now we've got that port open so we can access it. So we'll go to the new URL and now we've got the dashboard that we looked at before. So we're all good to go. You can set this up with authentication if you'd like to and uh, make it secure so that you can authenticate with say Google or the one-time pin that we show in some other videos. So you can make choices on all of that and go ahead and uh, make sure that you've got the right folks accessing that need to access it. And that way you also don't have to have that port open your firewall. So that's it. It's that easy. You've now been able to set up your very own VPN server and connect your very first client to it. You can access the web UI using Cloudflare tunnels. And now you can give access to friends, family, whoever you think might benefit from accessing a VPN server. You can use this when you're traveling abroad, if you're connected to public Wi-Fi, or anywhere else for that matter. If you want to set one up and connect to your home services, you can do that and access everything you've got internal to your home network. However, you will have to open a port in your firewall, which may not be what you want to do. I've got another video, though, that will show you how to set up Cloudflare Zero Trust and access all of your applications with authentication. That way, you won't have to open up a single port in your firewall, and you can still get to everything. But this is a great option whether you do want to VPN back into your own infrastructure, whether you want to just have a safe, secure VPN if you're out browsing uh, away from home. It gives you great options. So I hope you learned something new. I hope you like this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.